officers of the Ahepa Friends. What a pleasure to be here. Now, Brother Nick said that he uh, is able to lower his age by being with the lovely daughter of Penelope there. I have my own way. I go to Ahepa meetings where I actually walk in and lower the average age. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> you know, this year has been extraordinary in terms of travel. Two and I just realized that exactly one week ago, Saturday night, we were in London. 6,000 miles across the pond. We were in England at the time. We had just left Athens. And we've been so many time zones, it gets a little embarrassing. Because in every night we're in a different hotel, and when you try to let yourself in into somebody else's hotel room because you can't remember what room you're in, it gets embarrassing. Especially when security comes up and says, sir, what are you doing here? But anyhow, it's, uh, it's, we're delighted to be here. When Brother Bill uh, and Brother Ken invited us to come up, we would not miss the opportunity. Uh, um, you know, we've com not complained, but I've charged you today. Increase your membership. But let me say this, what you lack in quantity, you more than make up in quality. I congratulate you. When I see the Valentine's Day dance in Montreal, when I see the Sago Award program in, in Toronto, when I see what the Regina chapter has done, a small group of 2025 and they've raised millions, when I see what's done in Vancouver, and I've traveled across the entire HEPA domain over the years. And as many of you know, as Brother Byron mentioned, uh, we love Canada. We've done this Canada. We still have Newfoundland to discover. That, that's <laughs> the only one that has escaped us. And that's, Tulas is prepared. Uh, I, Brother Nick, I think I'm going to try to start a chapter up in uh, sure. in, 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 I don't know if those of you have focused, but Newfoundland is near and dear to the, to the, to the states on 9-11, on, on the day of 9-11, when uh, they shut down the airports in New York. All the flights landed in Newfoundland and were hosted by the people of Newfoundland in, 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 to help with the, with the United States. So, you know, we need a HEPA chapter, the real Biloxenia of a HEPA. So, in any event, uh, I like this, what I particularly, we talk about age, uh, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to see the young people here this evening. And and once again, Brother Nick, I'm going to correct you because you said they are our future. Our future is today. You are part of our leadership today. The password this year it was in the magazine, so I'm not giving away any great secrets. Oh. Was involvement. Involvement of our members. Involvement of prospective members. But most important, involvement of our youth. I tell the story, it's a bit facetious, but when I was made and I happened, they wouldn't give me the password for several years until they finally decided I was eligible to come in. So I was out the outside side. Oh, that's a lie, but anyhow, it makes a point. And the point is, I was reading in Time Magazine on the plane today, the, they were talking about uh, the police, that they have a hard time, for example, between police jurisdictions, everything is done by paper. They try to implement electronic systems, but generally it's internally, and sometimes it doesn't even go from one division to another division, let alone going from one police department to another police department. So it's all paper, it slows down the process, and quite often results in confusion. So now they have this company that's come up with venture capitalists, and they're going to go on the cloud, whatever that is. But I guess it's all done up here. Well, I always <laughs> lose my messages when I try to send them off my iPhone. And they supposedly have a good solution, and they've got, they raised several million dollars from venture capitalists to, to, to do this company. The CEO, the CEO of this company is 23 years old. Okay? That tells you something. And I'm looking at this young table over this people, table of young people. I'm looking at Sister Effie, who Brother Ken told me has chaired 
the same Valentine's Day dance in Montreal on two different occasions. Is that leadership or is that leadership? So I congratulate you for being here. And I challenge you to challenge your elders and be part of the organization because you are our future, which as I said before, is today. Let me say, I know Sister Effie was in Chicago. I, I, I'm asking you to seriously consider Brother Nick Nikas from Connecticut started the Hellenic History Tournament. You've all seen Jeopardy on TV. Uh, and it's a contest where the Tampa chapters or the daughters <coughs> chapters sponsor teams of three high school age. And they get together in a competition. Generally, they're given the same materials in June they study over the summer, then in the fall they come together. They've been doing it in Connecticut now for four years up in, um, outside of New Haven, in Orange, New Jersey, at St. Barbara's. And there's some logistics involved because they'll have team against team, team against team, and they, they, they're up to 16 teams. So they start with eight contests, the eight contests become four until you eventually get the champion. And these kids really study it. It's divided into ancient classic Greek history, Intermediate, which is the Byzantine period, and then the more contemporary uh, uh, history. And they pick the questions, and they challenge. It's just like Jeopardy. And these kids, get, young people, get into it. And they're challenged. They get excited. Um, and we were trying to move it into a different area. And this past year, Chicago did it. Now we have a bunch of young heavens who um, have started a chapter. To show you what they can do, they started with nine members, and in two years, they've grown to 65 members. They just initiated a class of 21 young sons who are all 18 and above and they're dual membership and they're going to be there because they're all going to universities in Chicago and so this is the strength of the chapter. They're up to 65 members. So they did the, they did. And Effie, I think you'll agree, we had uh, uh, eight teams and it inspired. And you know, you hear about the friction sometimes between the priests don't support it. Well, two priests moderated, helped moderate, because you need a moderator for every one of them, they both join the Alpha chapter. So, I mean, that's how much enthusiasm there was. So, you have the talent here, and you have the organization, and I really would like to see, we're doing it in Connecticut, we're doing it in Chicago, I'd like to see you do it either in Toronto or Montreal, somewhere in District 23. I know our son was the one that really pulled it together. I've already offered him to, uh, to Bill and to Ken as a consultant, if you want, to come up here to work on this thing. What we would like to do, we'd like to do it in at least four areas, and then take the first place and second place teams and bring them to the national convention and have a runoff and give a different perspective to our convention. So uh, again, uh, on education, uh, I, I'd like to congratulate my good brother Nick for the wonderful job he's doing as chairman of the, of the Educational Foundation. I was delighted to be able to appoint him this year. And I don't think I'm committing an act of hubris that he's going to be wearing another hat after the Supreme Convention where he's going to be become a member of the Board of Trustees. I don't want to, I, I, I imposed upon your patience today, but let me just say one other thing. Greece, Hellenism today is under attack. I mean, we, we have to be aware. Mother Alas has had incursions by an ally, by an ally in her territorial space under conditions where economic austerity, her very viability is, is, is at stake. And yet, you know, she endures and somehow tries to survive these external pressures. Cyprus continues to be a victim. 41 years of an illegal violation. 40,000 troops being maintained on this beautiful little island when they could be better placed over in the border with Syria and Iraq where all the jihadists are going over and joining ISIS. Why don't, the, why don't our allies in the NATO place those troops? When we've had 18 million crossings of the Green Line without a single incident, and yet Mother Turkey feels that they have to maintain 40,000 troops. When our Holy Patriarchate is under siege, under harassment, and it's only because of the remarkable presence of our Patriarch that we're able 
to survive and continue there, and God bless them, they have many, many years because he is a phenomenon in terms of helping us preserve our orthodox scene. And for the reopening of the seminary at Halki, and yes, as I mentioned earlier today, to think of our fellow Christians, our fellow Orthodox, who are being martyred even as we speak here today. So my friends, we have an obligation. We have an obligation. The legacy that we have been given of our Hellenism, of our culture, of our religion, our orthodoxy, we have the obligation, I really address my remarks to our young people, to maintain it. Let us not get down on ourselves. Let us look. You know, I resent when I hear the Greeks of today are not the Greeks that gave us the Parthenon, that gave us the Hellenistic values and the ideals, Socrates and Plato. Well, these were Greeks that survived 400 years of tyranny. 400 years where the effort was made to deprive our people of their language, their culture, their orthodoxy, their very identity, and yet they survived. The Greeks who rose up in 1821 against all odds to overthrow the tyranny that had dominated them for 400 years. And when they regained their status, the great powers decided we can't have a republic in the Balkans. So they imposed, they brought a king from Germany, and then they brought a king from Denmark until they found one that could have kids. <laughs> I don't could have them, you know. And so Greece again put up. And then 1923, and yet Mother Elas did survive. Again, whole, whole populations were transferred. And of course we come to 1940, the Oichi of October, where Greece inflicted the first defeat on what was considered to be previously an infallible, unbeatable fascist machine, and Greece defeated them to its detriment, where the country was literally decimated. My father has given me a Life magazine from 1943. Remember the old Life with the pictorial? And you look inside, and there's about six pages, and you see a pickup truck, a football. And you see wood loaded up. If you look a little more closely at the picture, it isn't wood. It's dead bodies of emaciated Greeks that died from starvation. And you go forward. Just a coincidental relationship. But you go forward another 10 pages, and there is a banquet in Turkey where the neutral Turks are entertaining the Nazis at a banquet, and you see the feast. There was no political statement. It just happened one of those remarkable coincidences in terms of I wish I could publish that and, and send it out and remind our friends. And yet today, this country that doesn't reflect its values, supposedly we're not the Greeks, yet it is little Greece with all its problems. That is the one of only four nations that meets its NATO obligations. It is one country that incurs almost half a billion dollars in Euro, uh, euros simply to respond to the Turkish incursions. And yet Mother Greece has stood there with the U.S. and I speak for the U.S., but clearly Canada, World War One, World War Two, in Korea, in Vietnam, and continue to do so. When Turkey denied the U.S. a third front in Iraq, it was the U.S. moving out of Suda Bay and Crete that moved in and, 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 and engaged the, the third front. And it was Cyprus that received the refugees and continues to be a source of help. So my friends, we have this legacy we must continue to make our voices known. We must continue to meet with our elected parliamentarians, our elected members in Congress, and let them know the message. And I do so as an American, because it is to the benefit of my country, the U.S. of A., but I happen to be of Hellenic extraction, and I'm proud to proclaim those values. So, Mr. Council General, I know I am no different from the rest of the Oboyenia, we are with Mother Elas. We are there. God bless us all.
I think I think that's uh, what Varoufaki told the uh, what was the other guy? Varoufaki's the reporter. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my goodness, brother. Well done. So the last, I have another few more minutes because I'm gonna bring Bill Bacalis, the new district governor for District 23 and Alan Balkanas to come over and do their own show. And then I'm gonna be around to say good night, have a good time, and we can talk and have fun. And if I remember by that time, because I, how many? Beers and gla glass of wines I had today. Uh, I, can, I can tell you I have about two liters of water and, and a Diet Coke. 